Hello, it's Brian again. Welcome to part two of my conifers of the Blue Jay Campground area video. So, I'm over by the knobcomb pines. I'm trying to see if I can find a easy way to get down there. These are right here. These are knobcomb pines. And you can see how much more upright the branches are. They tend to curve up much more strongly. The lower ones maybe not quite as much, but the upper ones curve up very strongly. That's why these ones I'm definitely convinced as being Pennis Attenuata, knobcomb pines. Let's see if there's a way I can get down there without getting sketchy. Let's see here. I don't have the really best shoes for hiking today. Let's see. Maybe I'll go around here. Won't be quite as sketchy. So, down here, got a mix of coulter pines and knobcomb pines. This is a coulter pine right here. We've got knobcomb pines on the ground. So here are the knob cone pines. Right over here, there's a knob cone pine. It, I do notice quite a difference. A little bit of a difference in the cones. So here's here's a knob cone pine. Notice the cones have much sharper much sharper claws that come out of them. Here we go. These ones have very, very, very much more noticeable claws coming out of them than those other pines over there. That's well, I'm really convinced about these being knob cones. And look at the look at look at the look at the stature. A lot of times they a lot of times they branch near the base. That's not always the case, but I've seen a lot of them where they start branching near the base. And they're definitely these are definitely knob cone pines. They also do some of their branches do kind of sprawl out kind of kind of strangely. If you notice here. These oh, warty protrusions, I guess they call them the knobs of the knob cone pine, seem to come out much more noticeably. And knob cone pines, like a lot of the close relatives, including Monterey, Bishop Pine, which are two other close relatives, they also have their uh, cones. Well, these are very old, unopened cones that grow very low on the main branches and sometimes even portions of the trunk. See what this means is it is a semi at least a semi serotonous tree. Most of these cones stay closed for years and years, sometimes decades. Of course, they do sometimes open up a little bit here and there. As you can see, this cone opened up. But some of these cones have stayed closed probably for decades or at least many, many years. But again, if you look at the cone scales, you can see how sharp these are. So yeah, this is definitely a knob cone pine. They almost look like miniature coulter pine cones because they have those real sharp claws that come out of them. 
much like the Coulter pine, but on a much smaller scale. This is a fairly mature tree. They don't usually get quite... They usually don't get very large here in Southern California. You definitely haven't seen them get very large here in the Santa Ana Mountains. They, we have native stands of them along, you know, along Main Divide Road from, let's say, uh, probably about a couple, maybe about a couple miles south of Pleasant's Peak to just past Agador Peak. Along Main Divide Road, you got some stands over there. But here's a younger knob cone pine. You can see very, very conspicuous cone claws that stick out. Very conspicuous. Much more so than the, than the Monterey pine. Uh, and I think more than the bishop pine. But personally, I'm not familiar with bishop pine because I've never, to my knowledge, I've never actually seen a bishop pine. I'm surprised it's taken me this long, but I've never actually seen a bishop pine. But a bishop pine is another close relative of knob cone and Monterey pines. And here's a here's a whew, not a good view because of the sun, but I'm trying to show you. You can see you can see how the branches tend to go up much more on this pine here. So honestly, I'm still a little confused. Still a little confused about uh, the population of pines over there by Falcon Group Camp. They could have hybrid. They could have hybrid genes in them. But again, cone scales, very sharp claws coming out of them. Almost as sharp as the Coulter pines, only on a much smaller scale, of course. But again, they kind of have that like that curved asymmetrical silhouette, which is very common for pines in that group. So, I think I am going to make a, a part three of this video. I'm going to go back over to those trees by Falcon Group Camp. It's a good few minutes of a brisk walk from here, so I don't think uh, keeping the video running while I walk over there would be really a... really a... <laughs> it probably wouldn't be worth the, people, the, the viewer's time. But. And here's a knob cone pine trunk. This one's single, but... I mean, you can definitely see the similarities between Monterey and Novco pines. The needles have that kind of rich, kind of rich green color. Both, both species have really rich green colors, whereas Coulter pines have a little bit more of a bluish cast in their needles. Even a little, and Novco pines and Monterey pines have even a little bit more of a rich green color than the Jeffrey and Ponderosa pines. But if we're talking about conifers here, you have some pretty decent, some decent, much older specimens of Coulter pine over here. These ones have been around here for a long time. These are probably some of the original uh, Coulter pines planted around here. Oh, here's one of the older. This is one of the older Coulter pines. It's got quite a girthy trunk on it too. So we're talking about conifers of the area. I guess we'll make mention of our beautiful Coulter pines. This one. It's got quite a large trunk on it. From there to there. This one's got quite a girthy trunk. There's some quite large culture pines around here. This is where we start getting towards the campsites of Blue Jay Campground over here. But of course, culture pine cones, much, much larger. And look at those formidable claws. Those claws 
are much crazier than your knob cone pine ones. Sure, a knob cone pine cone, it falls on you, would really, really hurt. Probably make you bleed. While they're not nearly as heavy, they are kind of sharp. Here's the young coulter pine. Coulter pines and knob cone pines and Monterey pines are easy to tell apart because of their uh, their, their needles. Coulter pine needles are generally much longer and send lighter in color. So actually, I know I started off the last clip really confident I was looking at Monterey pines, but now. I'm going to have to make a part three. I'm going to have to go back over there and kind of look at them. Now I'm not so sure. They can be hard to tell apart. What do you see? Here's a young coulter. Long bushy needles. Shorter needles. Coulter pines and knob cone pines can be quite upright in stature. But well, I'm going to go back to those Monter the, the supposed Monterey Pines and take a look over there. These cones are very well attached, too. That's the thing. You try to rip off a... If you try to... Say you try to rip off a, a knob cone pine cone or a Monterey pine cone, you'll probably take part of the stem with you. <laughs> Think about serotony. Serotony, you know, the, 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 the maintaining of the cones being closed for lengthy periods of time. Most likely because uh, they use fire as a way to open up their seed cones and drop the seeds on the forest floor and have everything grow back and regenerate. That's basically what serotony deals with. A couple of these knob cones have died, I noticed. Find this younger coulter pine, there's a dead knob cone pine. Here's another dead one. And here, here's an example. Growing on the main trunk. Not unheard of for the trees related to the knob cone pines to have their, tr their cones growing right on the trunk. Sometimes these trees and their close relatives, Monterey and Bishop Pines, have been known to expand in girth and then consume the cones within the trunk of the tree. So, that's been known to happen with uh, knob cone pines occasionally. So it's quite interesting. Very interesting. Alright, well I'm going to end the clip on that note. And in clip number three, I'm going to be back over by Falcon Group Camp. I'm going to scrutinize those trees a little bit more and see if I can confidently say one way or another that I'm really looking at Monterey Pines. I know they've been planted here in the, the Santa Anas before, but I really want to get a good look at the cones. All right, I'll see you on the next clip. Thanks for bearing with me this far on my big essay on conifers here, but these trees really got me shook. I really love these trees. I really love studying them and finding out about them. These trees are amazing. Alright, I'll see you on the next clip.